2007 complaint that is leaking um, power steering fluid so don't know where it's coming from it looked like it burnt the power steering fluid back to the reservoir so but I'm going to jack the cars up to see uh, where's the leaking coming from and I can see right here is all over the place that you know it looked like drip from right here it could be a refill of here and they don't have the uh, funnel and just drip from here but for sure need to check up to see if any of the uh, power steering line is break so let's find out all right you see right there is dripped from it doesn't say anywhere but it looked like drift from the uh, rock and pinion boot but not sure exactly where coming from and I'm going to crank the engines up and turn the steering to see if that whoop, you can see a drip right there okay and then this side also have all over the place so which is coming from the rock and pinion too so basically is the rock and pinion had to replace i believe so and both sides has leaked so you can see right there all right let's get it water and the rock and pinion i believe that it's from the rock and pinion but let me let me start the engine and turn the steering to see if that will be it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's it. Turn it. Yeah. Okay, shut it off. Alright, that's the uh, palm right there. You can see it drip from right there. So rock and pinion is bad. Even though I put a new boot, it won't help because that boot uh, is leaked from the internal, the seals. Loosen this nut first, and then you can break the uh, uh, tie rod away from the uh, uh, arm right here. You can use a ball joint press or you can hammer to hammer right here. A couple of times it should come off. Two times. So you have to do both sides. What you have to do is uh, Counting how many uh, turn from here. The reason you're counting because that will help your alignment to stay the same as uh, original. Other than that, if you don't do it right, you don't count from here. Let's say that right here. If you don't count it, it's fine. But mostly case you have to take to alignment to do the alignment and even though you do it this way sometimes it'll miss a little bit but mostly it doesn't so let me count this how many turn one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten eleven 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, about 17, a little bit more than 17, but 17 is close enough. And do the same on the other side too, because if you do one side and forget about the other side, then you will have a alignment problem also. You know the heat shield right here. And have a couple bolts that are holding that 
after I remove the three bolt, the heat shield should come off as you can see here. Okay, inside here, you need to pop this out. Okay, for me, I'm going to move this shield right here so it can be access down here, it's easier. And make sure you mark right here so when when the steering straight then you know exactly it's straight if you don't mark just eyeball from the steering up there it should be fine okay as soon as you take out this bolt right here out and uh, normally you have to tap a little bit of pry but this car is still pretty new so just push this way and they just pop right off I mean this is not this is 19 millimeter make sure you have the uh, container down there to receive the uh, power steam fluid because they it drip a lot okay and the second one down here is the 17 millimeter um, Okay, the one here already taken out, but the one down here you can use in long socket, which is you know 14 long socket, so it will fit better. And a short one you can't because there is something right here. This holds right here blocking, so use a long socket. It will be easier to go in there. Okay, pry this out. And this should pop right off. Okay, this side, you have to loop this one first, and then that one right there. This one right here is the 17. Now I free that bolt and I can pull this off. Okay, when you pull this off, you have more room to play with that bolt right there. So as you can see, when you use a swivel socket, you can be angled like that and you can take it out without going under the bottom. If you don't have one, it will be a little bit tougher, but still get it done. Yep, okay, got it. So, it kind of tight a little bit, but okay. you can see now it's free. Okay, it's still stuck up there, even though you slide and swing this way. It's just stuck up there, it's not free from that. So I have to go remove that piece. See? It's still stuck in right here. It's not free, so I try to pry this out. Good to see if that can be free from right there. So it what happened is when you take out that, you have to pry this out open like that. So it would be free from right there. Okay, even though up here is free now, but down here stuck with the uh, brake line right here, can take it out. So I have to disassemble, take that screw right, th that bolt right there out, and there's another bolt on this side. I have to take that one out too, to be able to take this out. Now I remove the bolt and that right there. That's how it come out. So for me to easier to get them back in there, I have to disassemble. Um, this one right here, it doesn't came with this um, O-ring. So I taken the uh, OEM one, put it back on this one. So I think they may forgot, but you know I don't want to go back to auto parts just get that ring. So just reuse that one, should be fine.
from up here you can see down there so I don't have no hand to hold in the camera so I'm going to show that to put it back just insert it uh, to align with the boat right here and just uh, you don't have to tap it just uh, keep screwing and they should go fit into the hole To get with the nut over there, I used to do the uh, foot crawl. This is the 12 millimeter, and just go over there like that. You know, pretty tight. I should get it done, no problem. And uh, other than that, I, I can't get in there. I have to remove the uh, rear motor mount to be able to get all this done so this is how this is how I get it done over here I plug everything in already, so uh, time to put this back. This is a little bit harder for do to do the reverse because when you take out. You just take it out, but when you put it back, you have to connect the line first. So when you connect the line first, then you don't have no more room for this right here. All right, time to count this back. <clears throat> it's a 17, so, okay. That'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17, Same thing on that side. 17. Okay, one, two, 15, 16, 17. Okay, 17. Had to put this back on. So now locking pin 
and this tied up already so ready to put the tires on you know this meet the uh, Honda and Acura requirement so I'm going to use this right here okay after turn a couple times it's still not going so you have to crank it to crank it to get this power steering pump to pump the uh, fluid into the system all right start the engine let the power steering fluid uh, the power steering pump pump in the uh, fluid into the uh, rug and pinion and then do a turn by turn turn all the way and now I can see that the uh, reservoir isn't grinding so I need to refill more uh, power steering fluid on that can't really see it but if I top up already it should be good enough at this point just cover up and lower the put the tire back on and load the car to the ground and can go test drive to see how it's, the car is running okay let's check for any signs of leaking again you know there's no leak you can tell that this side's not leaking either and uh, the car is ready to put on the road test to see how it is